goes Rusty. He was on third edition, Kenny, of uh, NASCAR Video Magazine. Second? Okay. Rusty's taking over third. We are live today at Pocono International Raceway near Long Pond, Pennsylvania for the NASCAR Miller Genuine Draft 500 being led right now after 54 laps by Ernie Irvin. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Subway, sandwiches and salads made fresh before your eyes. Well, let's go down to Jerry Punch, who's with well, Bob, there are thousands of fans enjoying the race today, and one of the special fans seeing his first ever NASCAR race live, he's watched a bunch of them on ESPN, is Atlantic record recording artist Martin Del Rey from Nashville, Tennessee. And Martin, welcome to NASCAR Racing. Thank you very much, Jerry. This is, this is fantastic, man. This is great. Do you have a favorite today? Well, my all-time favorite has always been Richard Petty, the king, but uh, I'm pulling for two guys, one from Tennessee, one from Arkansas, Darrell Walter, since I live in Nashville and originally from from Arkansas, so I'm kind of root for Mark Martin, too. Now, your hit, your hit album and hit single, Get Rhythm, was a, a video with Johnny Cash. I understand that is on the new NASCAR video magazine without uh, a second issue. I know it's hard to hear here. But anyway, glad to have you with us. Hope you enjoy the afternoon. Good to have you here. Thank you very much, Gary. Okay. Martin Delray, Atlantic recording artist from Nashville, Tennessee, enjoying some great NASCAR racing. Bob? Yeah, he's on the second edition of NASCAR Racing Video Magazine with you, anybody? Yes, he sure is. That's his uh, video on the very tail end of the racing video. Now watching uh, Ken Schrader, he has come up uh, from 22nd position. That's where he restarted after that pit stop, and he has headed for the front. Earnhardt slips a little bit. Schrader pulls right down on the inside. I mean, you know, Harry Gant just went right along there behind Earnhardt. Schrader moves into fourth position, Earnhardt back to fifth, and Gant runs sixth. It's impressive that Schrader's able to do this on new tires, go through the field the way he has, but it was also impressive as we see Harry Gant finally try to get by Dale Earnhardt and gets a run coming off the corner. But I was impressed with the way Schrader stayed in front on those used tires before he made the pit stop. Obviously saying something about how that car is performing today. Perry just can't get by Earnhardt. He had position coming off the corner, but Earnhardt's engine evidently pull out pulling Harry from the, at the end of the straightaway. I don't think Earnhardt's car is handling too good right now. He might be slipping a little bit in, in the turn. We've seen him slip a couple of times. Lost him a little bit of time. And we see Gant pulling up on him now as he comes off of that turn. We mentioned in the open, Dale Earnhardt is trying to break a string of the last three years, whereby the leader in Winston Cup points at this time in the season has not gone on to win the Winston Cup championship. Wallace uh, in 88. And of course, Elliott won the championship. Here comes Sterling Marlin on the inside. There's Ricky Rudd. Joe Rutman, Alan Kowicki, Richard Petty, all I'm trying to fight for position. They have really been jockeying around back there, sir. Marlon looks like he's off the pace a little bit as Dale Jarrett goes by him on the outside. Yes, exactly. 22 yeah, cars is off the pace. Off the pace substantially as he drops that car to the inside of the racetrack, and the Maxwell House Ford is in trouble. pit stops coming up before too long. I wouldn't think that he would have run out of gas Bob, quite this early, but you know, they've run, most of them made their pit stop on lap 22, and we're now on the 58th lap, so that's 36 laps, yeah. so they will have pit stops coming up here before long. A and big, straight big part of the field that stops on lap 22. Schrader and Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt and Harry Gant. Boy, all of these guys are just going at a tooth and nail. Watch Ken Schrader here. And Rusty Wallace, Schrader gets the spot. And 
again has finally gotten by Dale Earnhardt, but he moves up to the racetrack a little bit. Earnhardt looks like he's going to try to come back on the inside. Schrader now is third. Wallace is fourth. There's Gannon fifth. Then Earnhardt, remember 94 times the body is a lap down, and then Jeff Bodine, and we go inside as Budweiser fourth. Charlie Ballin did make it back to the pits while we watched this battle out on the racetrack. I believe Sterling did run out of gas. He took the four tires and filling it up with gas. And here now, Schrader trying to take over the second position from Hunt Strickland. And he's going to do so with ease. He gets the car to the inside of the racetrack off of turn number three. And Ken Schrader has moved back to second position. And now Rusty Wallace begins to close in on Hunt Strickland. I think uh, that Ken Schrader served notice. I'm the car to I think you're right in the four car. That's the leader of the race. Ernie Irvin is preparing for a pit stop. I think we're going to see a lot of cars in the next five or six laps for a pit stop. And meanwhile, Schroeder can run for another 25, 30 laps. There's the interval between first and second. You can see that Ernie Irvin has built up quite a substantial lead. However, is in need of a pit stop. And the crew waits on him. Let's see if it occurs this time. Yes, it's uh, going to. Ernie Irvin comes down off of the third turn, and let's go to John Kearney. This is a expected, uh, actually they expected Ernie to come in in about two laps, but his fuel light came on just as he was coming off of turn three, the last lap. So Tony Glover said, Ernie, Get the car in to the pits, and we'll take care of you on the very next lap. They're waiting, waiting. Seems like in eternity, we're all the way down in pit number two towards turn one. Ernie pulls it in. They will go to work on the right side. Hand Ernie a nice cool drink, getting some gasoline, and his car is still running, so he's not quite out there. have to get that front grill clean to make sure that the car doesn't overheat. More tires under green. They need a really good stop here. Right, are already on. Left are going on. They get them on. No blood that's falling off at this point. And Ernie sitting there waiting, waiting, gasping in 23.4 seconds. Last pit stop and last time for Ernie Irvin. This comes under green. He falls back substantially on the field. But he will stay on the lead lap, Bob. He's yep. getting out uh, pretty far in front of Rusty Wallace. Now comes in for a pit stop, and Terry touches right there to call pit stop. As expected, Jimmy Maycar and the crew are waiting on Dusty Wallace, and we will have the crew cam on Todd Parrott. Our crew cam on Todd Parrott as you run, see him run across to the car. Crew beginning to work on the right side of the machine. Now, Todd Parrott is carrying the tires. He will throw that right rear tire down. You see he's looking at the tire. He's clutching the lug nuts. Eddie Dickerson putting those lug nuts on. Now, they jump around on the left side of the car. We're continuing on Rusty Wallace's car on the crew cam as they're getting ready to stop Rusty Wallace to pick the lead car of Hunt Strickland. Rusty Wallace is through now. Left side tire zone, 22.6 seconds, and the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac is away. Some great shots there from the crew cam as Rusty Wallace goes back out onto the racetrack from Todd Parrott. Speaking of camera angles, did you see Saturday night last night in the tread cam? <laughs> Wasn't that unbelievable? Sure did. What a great shot. A camera embedded in the racetrack. Track. Yeah. Hunt Strickland now coming down uh, pit road. He had assumed the lead after Ernie Irvin made a pit stop. Let's go back to the pit. Well, Bobby Allison's red best is spewing. He'll be fitting in the crew waiting on Hunt. Schedule pit stop for Hunt Strickland. They will make a chassis adjustment on the right rear. He'll be fitting now back across the wall. They have cleaned the windshield. You'll remember, NASCAR watching very close to the number of people over the wall. Right side tires are on. They pitted on lap 21, so they have run 40 laps or 100 miles on the track. And also in front of them, Ricky Rudd is getting service in his tie shoe right as the Robestus Buick is out of the way. Rudd's crew is and the Goodrich Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt will follow Hunt Strickland down pit road. And then comes Rick Mast as Ricky Rudd's tide machine stays on pit road. Now down off the jacks on the left side. He begins to build up speed, speed coming out of the pits. As the lead now goes to Kenny Schrader. Kenny Schrader. There's Harry Gant. Jeff Bodine. It could be as many as 20 laps before Ken Schrader will need another pit stop. 
63 circuits have been completed out of 200. This is the Miller Genuine Draft 500 from Pocono International Raceway. Back in a moment. Rudd went a lap down. Hitting on all eight today. Brett Ledine went a lap down. <laughs> Brett went a lap down, so did Rudd on those pit stops. Yep. All right, sir. Here comes Brett trying to get his lap back. Schrader stayed out there, stayed out there, caught the perfect caution play. And all the rest of them chose to stay. Now they're in trouble and he's out just The yellow has come out once again here at Pocono because of a crash back in turn number two. We see a car that has slid to the inside and picked up some dust. It appears to be the number 64 car, and that would be Gary Wright's machine. Boy, this is going to be a break for some drivers, Bob, who had not made a pit stop. Bad break for others. Ricky Rudd went a lap down when he made his pit stop, and I don't think he beat Schrader back to the line, did he, Benny? That was my question. I don't know which one of them, the caution fell before or after they got to the line. If it was after, I would think that Schrader would probably let the five car go by. So we'll just... Well, evidently, Schrader did get the caution because he has slowed down and Rudd is slow behind him, so evidently they did get the caution. Let's go to the piss and Jerry Punch. Remember the top of the show, guys, we saw a close-up of Darrell Walter's eyes. Well, if you saw him right now, you'd see a big smile on his face because they were scheduled to pit in one lap. So you mentioned it was a break for someone. Well, indeed, at Daytona, he didn't get much of a break, flipping six times. But here at Pocono, again, things are going his way. Because right on cue, the caution came out, and DW will bring the Western Auto Chevrolet down pit road for what would have been a scheduled green flag, but now caution flag stop. He had moved up to fourth place as a result of a lot of those pit stops. And that's what remember that Bill Elliott now has made his lap back up. He was in front of Schrader when his caution flag came up. Let's Jerry Punch. Pit. Pit stops as the crews and cars now coming down pit road. Ken Schrader, Jeff Bodine, here's Darrell Waltrip, Harry Gann, Mark Martin, and Alan Kowicki as they all make their way on the pit road. And here's DW in the Goodrich, pardon me, the Western Auto Chevrolet, the Exxon Superflow car. And we'll show you Kenny Schrader as well. Is this Kodiak crew going to work on that car? Schrader on the top of your screen. Jeff Hammond and the Western Auto crew on the bottom of your screen. Four tires for Kenny Schrader. Richard Broom is a crew. Likewise, four tires. They're hustling through here. Doug Roger. Schrader is out. Getting all the steel in the Western Auto car here Walker. And we will see now Ken Schrader will beat Darrell Walker down. But here comes the Budweiser car. It's Jeff Bodine. Harry Gant is out. Likewise, Morgan Shepard and Harry Gant. Great work there by that crew as they make their way down the road. Here is Bill Elliott in for tires. The Coors Light crew, right side tires. They dance around on the left side of the car. Jack Pernick, the left side of that car. Our latest winner here in Winston Cup Racing and a four-time Pocono winner. Elliott getting service under the caution. So as you said, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, and Bob, a lot of breaks for some of these teams who desperately needed a green flag stop and now get to make the stop under the leisure of the yellow flag. And Elliott completes his work, goes out onto the racetrack, and is hoping to become the winningest driver in Pocono history with a victory here this afternoon. Well, we're getting closer to the halfway point. Call now to enter the ESPN Pick the Winning Chevy Sweepstakes. To enter, all you have to do is dial 1-900-933-9300 before the halfway lap. If your entry is selected and you have given the correct 
Chevy winner, you could win a new Chevy Lumina Z34. Stay tuned to see which car is the first Chevy to finish. Here at Pocono, 66 laps have been completed out of 200. We'll be back with more from Pocono and the Miller Genuine Draft 500 right after this. Well, Ned Schrader Well, Ned, they Schrader blew that what? period. There's going to make so many pit stops. Uh, <laughs> what? I, yeah, it's working. I'm just messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. <laughs> well, thank you. I didn't, I didn't hear you say throws. I just kept talking. Hey, 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 John, John carried it in Daytona, so I thought I'd give him, a, give him a little help today for a change. Look at that, Ned. They're putting a new nose, guys, on the 28 car. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very good. Red is. Just so you know, the, the 28 car is running hot. That's why they had to change the nose. at Pocono under caution work on pit road and here's something that you don't see every race they're putting a new nose on the 28 car a complete new nose piece on the 28 car Jerry Bunch what in the world are those guys doing well it's cosmetic surgery Benny of course and that's happened to some of the best of us I guess over the years with uh, when God wasn't very kind to us at birth but in any event all jokes aside the real reason for the change of the nose on that car is because when he got in the crunch early in the afternoon they put so much sheet metal back against the radiator they just couldn't pull it out and the car was just overheating they couldn't get enough air through there and couldn't get it channeled properly to the oil cooler and to the radiator they decided to go ahead and replace the nose and make sure they didn't cook an engine because they want to stay in the points race they want to have a shot at getting a good finish here today at Pocono. Well, uh, Davey Allison finds himself now in fifth position in the point standings. They apparently have made the change. There goes Davey Allison back on the racetrack. We'll take another break and be back in just a moment. I think that's a good shot, don't you? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. yeah. Boy, could we elaborate on that? That's the temperature inside the car. 115. That's not bad. I, I mean, I always thought it was 130, 40 back then. Pocono International Raceway, and you're looking at a thermometer, a thermo, yeah, thermometer inside Jeff Bodine's car. It's reading 115 degrees inside that car. That's, That's under not caution. too bad. Not too bad. That's under caution right now. The green flag's coming out. I believe we're ready to go green flag racing again. Yes, indeed we are. We'll see if that goes up. What's the uh, 
and get the RPMs in that team can ramp up. The figure is 92 or so outside. 115 isn't bad inside a closed race car. Into turn number one. Richard Petty, who is running in sixth position at the moment. And he goes by. That's John Paul Jr., car 53, making his first Winston Cup start, by the way. The leader of the race is Ernie Irvin. Ricky Rudd in the Todd Chevrolet right in front of Irvin is a lap down right on the tail end of the evening. He's trying his best to get that lap back. Bobby Hillen running there. Fifth position. Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt are ahead of these two. King, Richard Petty. Richards, uh, best finish of the year, came here at Pocono. He finished 11th. He was also 11th at Richmond earlier. Pocono has been good to the King over the years. He has won on this racetrack twice, 1974 and 1976. There we see Sterling Marlin, who lost a lap earlier with a flat tire, trying to get one of his laps down. He's on the move, trying to get inside Rudd, who is trying desperately to stay in front of Ernie Irving. And look at Sterling Marlin go. And look at that Strickland. He says, OK, Sterling, if you want to lead the way, I'll join you. Ooh, baby. That was so close. That was pretty close. Cool. Now the battle for the lead continues. Sterling. Look at Rusty Wallace on the inside. In the and the work line. He had the left side tires down where you just don't go. Oh, and uh -oh. a spin. Hot Strickland. And oh, and Richard. A massive crash coming off turn number three. The racetrack is completely blocked. There's Dale Earnhardt backing down the racetrack. Darrell Waltrip is involved. Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Bobby Hillen, Bobby Hillen King Richard almost flipped. But he is among those that is running. to the left front. Rudd pulling away. Here comes Rudd pulling away, as is Alan Kowicki, and Dale Earnhardt is headed the wrong way on the racetrack, but now comes into pit road. we we'll see some heavy damage to that 42 car right in the left side of the screen. Darrell Waltrip is uh, against the inside wall. And poor Darrell suffers a second crash in as many races. The GM Goodrich crew going to work now. On the three car. Of course, the uh, pit road is closed. They're still waving the flag up there, but Earnhardt figured he couldn't go around the racetrack. He just went up to the end of the There's Richard Petty's car, but Earnhardt did come in with this, even though it's close, so they're working on the car. There's the King, and there's Darrell Walters, battered Western Auto Lumina. We can see the damage that he's done to the guardrail. See the Ford sign? Oh, yeah. And how the guardrail is bent where Darrell has run into it. So there's some obvious and heavy damage to the front of his car. We see the the emergency people talking to there. It looks like he was trying to start the car and uh, maybe he was thinking about uh, getting going. Let's hope that is the situation. The 25 car is also on pit road, as is Dale Earnhardt. Well, it all happened as Hutt Strickland and Ernie Urban were battling for the lead in turn three. They're coming off the corner. Ernie runs up and just touches the 12 car in the back enough to send him spinning. Hunt almost saves it, but then he goes back across the racetrack and look at Richard go over the nose of that five car. Here comes Earnhardt. He hits the five. The 42 car comes off the wall, and boom, Darrell Waltrip hits the 42 car and then goes into the inside retaining wall. I'll tell you, it's lucky that somebody didn't hit the uh, the abutment there separating the racetrack and pit road. Here it is again, Hutt up high. You see, when they're coming off that turn, fellas, they can't just cut those cars to the left and get out of the way because they, the momentum is going to the outside of the track. And so when something's in the way out there, they're, they just don't aren't able to do much with the cars. There we see the 42 car once again right in the smoke as he comes off. Now, I have to keep my eye on Dale Jarrett. You know, he's sort of coming down through there for the fourth time today. He has weaved his way through one of those things. <laughs> the gods are riding with him. Oh, Here is it is from the speed shot. You can see how Richard Petty's car gets way up in the air. It goes over the nose of two others. It comes back down, luckily, on its wheels. Strickland spins down to the end of pit road. 
out of the way of the other cars at least. There we see the 42 car once again just spin right in front of Darrell Walter. As far as the cleanup here on the main straightaway, both Bobby Hillens and Darrell Walter's cars are on the hook being taken off of the racetrack. And it appears as if all drivers are in pretty good shape. But a lot of work has to be done on pit road to get some of these cars back in action. Back in a moment. I thought uh, I thought that kind of thing was over, but I guess not. I did. Did any? Was there anybody hurt? Do you know? I know. Can you see? Did all I'm get out of the cars here? Kenny, did you see? Certainly the most serious of the afternoon as a massive crash has eliminated several cars and the cleanup procedure is underway here on the main straightaway. The accident in turn number three and Ricky Rudd is among those who was involved in the crash and the crew is working on that car. There is uh, the area here on the main straightaway. Darrell Waltrip hit that inside wall and caused the damage. Now, a replay of the crash from Dale Jarrett's in-car camera. Let's listen. the thing that you want to do when the wreck is over get out of there as soon as you can because somebody's gonna come and tag you if you don't you know what that shot reminded me of remember days of thunder when uh cold trickled through the crash that looked exactly the way it was let's go to jerry punch on pit road actually bob we're back in the garage area and darrell walter has climbed out of his car and is hugging his wife stevie he is okay obviously upset but Darrell stayed in the race car. They brought the race car back into the garage area, and he was directing the repair efforts for the car here in the garage area. The crew now working feverishly to, -put, to put this Western Auto car back together. Darrell's here watching him work on the car. He said, first of all, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I, I'm just really disgusted. Uh, you know, I, got, I don't know what's going on. It must be the summer heat, but we got some guys that are just not using any, any judgment. How bad's the car hurt, D.W.? Oh, it's tore all the pieces. We might be lucky to get going. I doubt it, though. Darrell Walter Balter, obviously frustrated, but he is all right and thankful for that. And the replay here is the crew now. Richard Petty's car getting airborne. The STP Pontiac Strickland sideways, Ricky Rudd sideways. And everything breaks loose. No way to stop. Earnhardt into the five car. Heavy damage in the front of the good red Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt. Car spinning and sliding. Richard Petty now comes down and sliding sideways into car number 43. A tough break for a lot of competitors, including Richard Petty. And Darrell Walter getting tagged by Bobby Hill, and his car goes head on into the wall. And then thus they have the Western Auto Chevrolet now back in the garage area, trying to rebuild it. The front end, they will have to put a radiator. Most of the front suspension, the motor seems to be okay. They are still looking at it here, but another tough day for DW. Well, we talked at the opening how when you look into the eye of a storm, behind there could be disaster. And 
disaster has struck Darrell Walter for the second consecutive race. He's okay. So is Bobby Hillen. Everybody appears to be okay, and that's where Darrell's Chevy <laughs> ran into the wall right at the Ford sign. And we see the NASCAR official, Buster. Buster Alton. Uh, looking to make sure what they can do about the problem. John Kernan is down with Kenny Schrader, John. Well, they're going to work here on the Kodiak Chevrolet. Kenny, a lot of damage on this front end. Can you fix it, do you think? Oh, they'll get it fixed. These guys are good, but uh, it won't put us up there in contention to win this thing, though. What happened out there? It just, I looked up and saw the cars coming down and just a bunch of smoke and just a big mess. We were all in a pile going into three, and uh, we were four wide in the middle that straight away. We got down two wide. We looked pretty good, you know. And uh, the, tw uh, the 12 car started spinning. I don't know if he got help or what, but... Uh, we made it through it. We didn't hit anything. We got run over from the back. Thoughts from Kenny Schrader, who, by the way, has been a busy man. He has raced at various racetracks throughout the country 20 of the last 24 days. But Kenny Schrader right now does not race. Rather, he sits in his car and hopes that the crew can get that car back in the race and at least get some more Winston Cup points. And it looks like I thought that that was a clash of the field today. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, he I had the too. car to beat. He had come from the back and uh, just was doing a super job. Now let's go back to the pits and Jerry Punch. Well, gentlemen, still a lot of carnage here in the garage area. What's left of the mellow yellow Pontiac of Bobby Hill? And you see here in the garage and, of course, the crew working on it, Gary Nelson and all the Sab Crew crew trying to rebuild the front end. His car came into contact with the Western Auto Chevrolet, Darrell Walter, a little bit ago. They have not seen their driver, Bobby Hillen, who's been taken to the infield care center. They have heard from Bobby, spoke with him on the radio. Bobby said he was okay, but NASCAR rules mandate when you take that kind of lick, and it's a precaution, and it's a good one, I might add, that the drivers go be checked out at the infield care center, and that's where Hillen is. Now, they are working feverishly here to get the car repaired. Hopefully, when they get the car fixed and Hillen gets out of the care center, they'll be able to get back out and pick up some points. Remember, Bobby Hillen in the top ten in the point standings. All right, so work continues on Bobby Hillen's car. Dale Earnhardt also remains on pit road, and Earnhardt has not had a DNF because of an accident since the Firecracker 486. Back in just a moment. <laughs> Who's left? Maybe. Irvin? I just hope they are running. I just hope they are running that commercial on the network showing Ernie Irvin my internet contest. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, he... <laughs> He's the only Chevy left, isn't he? <laughs> he and Dave Marcus the way they are. <laughs> Boy, the lines are going to get busy now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. We are back at Pocono International Raceway in Pennsylvania for the Miller Genuine Draft 500. 76 laps completed. We're still cleaning up a multi-car crash coming off of turn number three. Here's how it all began. You see the 12 car. That's Hutch Strickland. Just get tapped slightly by the four car. Ernie Irvin, the Kodak Chevrolet. Ricky Rudd tried to turn Erner under Hutt right in front of Richard Petty. They make contact. There's Earnhardt, the black three. There's the 42 car. Oh, well, Bobby Hill, and that hurts just watching it. He gets hit by Rick, by Darrell Waltrip. Darrell goes down and hits the inside wall, and Kawicki, our pole sitter, comes along. He's made it through the accident until right there, Darrell Waltrip is in front of him. Well, uh, Bobby Hill certainly took the uh, hardest lick. Jerry Punch is with him. Indeed, Bobby. I think you would agree you probably took the hardest lick here in, in this race. Uh, first of all, how are you? I'm fine, Jerry. You know, thank the Lord everybody's okay. Uh, 
I just, it was really disappointing. That's the best run we've had going all year. We were right there with them, and uh, just unfortunate. A couple cars in front of us got together, and everybody started spinning, and I just uh, felt like a pinball in there getting hit around that front straightaway. So, uh, you know, just all the guys on the Melly Yellow crew are working hard. We're going to go back out and get all the points we can get. Well, they're working on the car. We'll let you rejoin them back there. We'll hope you to get back out in this event. Let's go up on pit road where John Kernan is standing by with Richard Childress. The Richard Childress racing team has been very busy over the past few minutes. Dale involved in that crash, but you're getting him back out, and you uh, think you can still run this race. Yeah, well, you know, right now it bent the right front of the frame up real high, and we're just going to have to go out there and run and do as good as we can right now and uh, see what happens. Yeah, any, you were also up around the oil cooler in that area. Any of that uh, damage? No, we just we just got it good now where you can uh, uh, talk. He's talking to, to Dale right right now. Yeah, we're okay on the oil cooler, I think. It just broke up all the, uh, everything on the nose. Well, the car is. A lot of sheet metal damage around it, a lot of uh, bumps in it, dings, whatever you want to call it. The number is even torn a little bit on the door, but they're going to work on the car and keep it out there and try and get as many Winston Cup points as they can. Boy, a lot of bent sheet metal. We're getting ready to go back to green. However, we haven't reached the halfway point yet, and that means you can still enter our pick the winning Chevy sweepstakes. Now, for those of you who have already entered, well, you may want to rethink things in view of what's happened in the last 10 minutes. Dial 1-900-933-9300. And if your entry is selected and you have given the correct Chevy winner, you could win a new Chevy Lumina Z34. So you still have the opportunity. We haven't reached the halfway point yet. We're only at lap 78. And we are about to go back to racing. Deal comes off of corner number three. The green flag waves from De Doyle Ford, and here we go once again. You see the Snowball Oldsmobile of Terry Labonte up in the front. That car is a lap down around right on the tail end of the lead lap. And Mark Martin, the sixth car. Ooh, and there's a blown engine right behind him. That's the 53 car of John Paul Jr. loses an engine going down in turn one right in front of the field. John Paul Jr., the former IMSA champion, making his first Winston Cup start. He finished third in this car in an ARCA race here last month. And now some flames beginning to show from underneath that car. John Paul Jr., his engine has let go here at the begin the restart of this race. No caution yet. We understand that Ricky Rudd maybe has a flat tire. And if the caution should come out, would help him. But... Uh, we don't, uh, yeah, the yellow is out now, so that will be a break for Ricky Good. Yellow flies once again for the ninth time. And here comes the sixth car in 94. Lamont is trying desperately to get that lap back. But he'll not do it as Mark Martin crosses the line first. This has been one action-packed, event-filled race so far, and we're only 79 laps in. Caution out once again for the ninth time in the Miller Genuine Draft 500. Okay. We have anything to drink up here? Anybody want anything? Um, yeah, I'd like a fresh one. Yeah. Uh, there's some right next door. Yeah. There's just there's some drinks right next door to us, new. Hmm. We need to thank uh, Fleetwood Motorhomes, yep. and we need to mention Helen Pearson. Yep. Yep. Welcome back to our live coverage of the Miller Genuine Draft 500 from Pocono. This time, the caution is because of a blown engine. And Mark Martin is coming into the pits as we remind you that the Toronto Indy, which is being held today up in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, can be seen tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Time here on ESPN. Here's John Kernan. Just talked to Jack Roush. Mark is coming in. He's making the pit stop to four tires. He said, hey, we want to win this race. We can now make it on only two stops. One more stop. Let's do it. 80 
laps. He's got 120 laps to go, so he only needs two more stops. So this will be a four-tire change. The crew going to work on the right side. A little bit leisurely, more so uh, than you would see under green. Right sides are on. Left sides, Jack going under, ready to go up. Left's coming off. And Audie's getting a full drink of fuel. Also, others on pit row wise. should say Kenny Schrader is now uh, standing by waiting to go out. Mark is away. And Kenny has completed repairs, and he's headed back on the track. And they have asked him, John, to bring Ricky Rudd in, and now he is on pit road. They're taking a look at his tied Chevrolet. They have peeled the, com the left door completely off the car, and he comes by. You can look through the roll bars and see Ricky in there shifting gears and driving the car. And NASCAR would like him to put a screen or something over that opening on the left side so that in case someone would have a problem or blow an engine or there'd be some debris on the track, it wouldn't be able to get through those roll bars in to injure the driver. So Ricky Rudd now sitting on pit road. He begins to move away back to turn one in his damaged tied Chevrolet. Another wounded car from that crash up in turn number three goes back out onto the racetrack to just complete as many laps as possible and get as many laps as possible. Dale Earnhardt also comes in for another time as they continue to work on that good wrench Chevrolet. Bob, while we'll have a moment, there's uh, another sad note in the world of auto racing this week. Helen Pearson, wife of David Pearson, passed away. Helen had been ill for more than a year. Of course, the mother of Larry Pearson, driver in Western Cup races uh, occasionally, and Ricky Pearson, who's the crew chief for Robert Presley on the Bush Grand National Circuit, and Eddie Pearson, also one of the sons of David and Helen, and certainly our condolences too, David and, and all the boys. From all of us here at ESPN. Earnhardt goes back out on the racetrack. Jerry, what's the situation there? Bob, they keep bringing him in, peeling away more and more sheet metal. There's not much left on the left side of that car, and they keep trying to make sure he has plenty of clearance there for the coolers in the front of the car. One of the crew members had to chuckle a minute ago and said, hey, the last time this car ran, Richard Childress drove it in the race of legend, and it looks about the same as it did then when Childress drove the car. So uh, they smile a little bit at their car owner, but Richard Childress and the crew very serious about getting Dale Earnhardt back in the fray here, but they've got a lot of work to do on this car number three. Bill Elliott in, uh, not so much for uh, cosmetic work. They're checking the tires on that car. Now, we have seen a lot of sheet metal peeled off of some of these cars. They've got to weigh a lot less than they normally do. Do they have to make a minimum weight after the race? No, they don't. They have to weigh a, a minimum weight as the race begins, 3,500 pounds. But all that stuff they're taking off doesn't weigh much. Doesn't weigh that much. And Bill Elliott evidently has a problem because they were looking under his car like like they couldn't figure out exactly what was going on, not just looking at the tire. They were looking at the tires, but it looked like he had some type of problem. Mark Martin in and out again, John. Well, Bob, what they thought, they thought they might have left a lug nut or two loose on the left rear, so it was more a precautionary measure. Mark pulled it in. He was already back at the tail end of the field by virtue of that last pit stop, so they didn't really lose any track position. Mark came in. They checked it. Everything was okay and sent him on his way. So Martin back out on the racetrack. King Richard Petty also goes back out. We're still under caution here at Pocono. We'll be back after these messages. Who's leading? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the leader's leading. <laughs> you know, if he can keep on leading this thing, he can win it. That's exactly what I was thinking. Let's do that. We'll, we'll talk. Remember last night when Lou Saccone was asked if they can win, and he said, as long as we keep leading, we can win it. I'll, I'll ask Ned that. <laughs> Benny, <laughs> Benny, answer your question on Elliott. I just ran up here. They said uh, they just uh, topped it off and checked the tires, make sure there were no punctures, but there's no problem. They want to get as much gas mileage out of this machine as they can. All right. It really looks like yeah, I, I saw him sitting there for right, a long sir. time, too. We were running up here. Couldn't quite get here before he left, but they said there's nothing wrong. We should be going back to green next time around on lap number 83 and resume our Miller Genuine Draft 500, which is being led at the moment by Dale Jarrett. Ernie Irvin is running in second position. 
followed by Joe Rutman. Last night during Saturday Night Thunder, Lou Ciccone, the father of Bob, uh, was asked if they can win the race. Ned, can you guys win this race? Yeah, as long as he can keep leading, he can win it. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a great comment last night from Lou Ciccone. <laughs> yeah, it was a great comment. What the truth? Well, that's right. <laughs> The 94 car and the 66, the two cars are immediately behind the Pace truck. And I say Pace truck because that's what it is, a GMC truck or a lap down or tail end of the lead lap. They desperately want to stay in front and uh, hope there's another caution flag. I think we're hoping there's not another caution flag. Oh, yeah, that's flag, for sure. But, uh, You've had enough wreckage for one day or one year for that matter. Now, many of those cars, even though they are almost a lap down there at the tail end, but they can stay out in front of Dale Jarrett. They don't have to pull down to the inside of the track on the restart. No, they don't have to. Here comes Schrader. He's then on the inside, which that's yeah. the lap cars, the fellows yeah. that are a lap down are on the inside. Of course, Lake Speed chose to do that, pull down on the inside of Terry Labonte. To try to get that primary position. Yep. Here's Dolph Ford, the NASCAR Winston Cup flagman, waiting. He hears the sound, sees the cars accelerate. He throws the green flag. And here we go once again. Lap 83 complete. Green coming out on lap 84. Probably won't take Ernie Irvin long to dispense of, of Dale Jarrett. There he goes down the inside of him. There comes Jeff Bodine, Brett Bodine. Several of them going back on into turn one. So Ernie Irvin now has the lead of the race already. There's Schrader on the inside. And Schrader, by the way, is seven laps down. Seven down. He goes by leg speed. Well, that deficit has been made, or that many laps deficit has been made up in the past. I think Richard Petty at Dover, Delaware one time was eight laps down. Yeah. Eight laps down. Then I went off to about 14 laps one time, so yeah. I had to get that in. I, I didn't know the chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you said that you won by 14. I was one of the guys that was not. <laughs> Put Terry a lap down. A lap down. And there's Rusty Wallace and Jeff Bodine. Two cars that look like they got through the crash, and the 12 car is back running at speed. Rusty trying to get by. Dale Jarrett, the sit goes forward, and Jeff Bodine comes along. And here comes the 12. On Dale on the outside, Ned. Yeah, that's not the place to be. Drive careful out there, Dale. <laughs> Keep that line. Let it go by. Second through sixty. Hey, there's Harry. He's still here. I'll tell you, he's still going to be tough before this race is over, fellas. See there, he didn't even he didn't go up there and get too aggressive trying to get around Dale. He, he knows that he'll be able to do it here pretty quick. Rick Mast having a problem here. It looks like car number one. A skull car going very slowly over the tunnel turn. This may cause another caution. If he can make it to the pits, we'll be okay, but I'm not sure. He's going awfully slow. I don't think. Well, looks like he, the car might be accelerating yeah. now. He's picking up some speed now. Yep. He's picking up speed. He made a pit stop here just uh, on the last lap before the green flag came back out. Changed tires. Even after the wreck in the seven laps that they spend in the pits for repairs, Schrader's got a pretty good car. He's staying ahead of Urban. He does have a good car. And, you know, I can't see any real damage to that car. I just, he said they got one from behind, and I don't know what it broke because I'm looking at the rear of the car, and I don't see any real damage there, nor do, nor do I see any in the front. Yeah, it looks like there's some on the left uh, there for the front wheel. <laughs> Pitch back good. Rick Nash did indeed make it to the pits. He's coasting into his pits right now, coasting right on by his pits, as a matter of fact, and headed to the garage area. So whatever it is, it's going to put him in the garage. And Urban will pass and Schrader going into turn one. Jerry, what's the situation with Rick Nash? We just ran up here, and he couldn't stop. They think they've broken the right front brake rotor, and they've been pumping the brakes to try to get the car to stop enough to get it turned into the garage area. Now he does make the turn in the garage. They're going to try to replace the right front brake rotor getting back on the racetrack. Mass pulls a car into the garage area, but they will go to work and try to get it back out in just a few laps. You know, every time a car goes to the garage area, especially if they stay in there, that's another three points for Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd and those that are, are struggling a little bit here today. 
Did you see Jeff go down trying to pass him? He, was he trying to pass him? It was, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> And Jeff Bodine battling for position. Well, they had the 11 on the screen here. They had the 11 in front the last time. So I guess Strickland was passing him. I didn't think that looked right. Here's Martin Knox trying to get inside there again. Can't make it. Martin, after all those pit stops, is up in pretty good shape. Sure is. Because he uh, was at the tail end of this lead draft when they restarted the race. You know, fellas, surprisingly, there are still 19 cars on the lead lap, even after all of these problems. And one of those, the last car in the lead lap, is Jimmy Means in the Alpha Self to Pontiac. Good to see him having a good run here. Yes. He's staying on the lead lap. Behind the Budweiser Ford, and now this is the way it looks to him. On Strickland, just ahead. Off of turn three, onto the front stretch. But Kurt Strickland did not lose a lap in that uh, wreck, so he's uh, hanging right in there. Martin Mark to the inside of Harry again, and passing Harry into turn one. Harry won't put up too much resistance. He'll just pull back in front of the field right there and uh, keep him a good line. I still believe he's going to play in the break. Bodine and Rusty Wallace are battling for position. That's for second. Rusty takes it. Here comes Hunt Strickland to third, and Brett Bodine goes to fourth. Brett Bodine has quietly been running out of his race, isn't he? Sure has. He made a green flag pit stop, got a lap down, but got back in front of Ken Schrader then before a caution came out just a couple laps later, and so got himself back in contention. Blaker State Field running very well today with Brett Bodine behind the wheel. There's Eddie McDuffie right on the left side of the screen as we, as we see the Bodine brothers lap by him. Jeff looking ahead to brother Brett. Jeff looks right up on the back bumper, and here comes Mark Martin trying to get by Jeff. Jeff position. This is one in the top corner. And this is for fifth position. And Mark Martin passes Jeff and takes over fifth. Okay, he's come back up to that pretty good, fellas. He made a pit stop, you remember, on this last caution flight. So he has come from the back of those 19 cars that are still in the lead left. All right. Jeff goes right up on the back bumper of Mark. Mark doesn't get in the corner good, but boy, he gets back on that gas and gets off the corner. Super. He's one of those drivers that is changing gears, which helps him get off the turn track. Ken Schrader continues to run right behind the leader of the race. However, he is seven laps down. Jerry Punch has a report. Well, Ken Schrader made an excellent move, or he would have lost a lot more time, guys. When that accident happened, he broke the left front A-frame, so the car was undrivable. Turn at the end of the straightaway, came up pit road the wrong way, took the car back to the garage area, they jacked it up, put an A-frame under it. He went back out, only lost seven laps. So considering they replaced the entire left front A-frame assembly, he's not too bad a shape. Not at all, and the car's running well. Ernie Irvin is leading, however, as we are approaching the halfway point. 89 laps have been completed on a hot and sunny day in the Pocono Mountains. <laughs> a billion miles. Billions and billions. Okay. Need to give up. Mention that 19 cars in the lead lap. We need to, need to give them that. Good. Good.
Okay. Around the world with over a million miles of race coverage. ESPN Speed World today in Pocono, Pennsylvania. For the Miller Genuine Draft 500, and they have turned out by the thousands for this race despite the hot and humid weather. This is a great place to spend a summer vacation. Of course, a great place to spend a winter vacation with the mountains nearby. Great skiing in the wintertime and lots of things to do in the summertime, including watching racing here at Pocono International. Ernie Urban in number four is the leader of our race as we're seven laps from the halfway point. And now we'll give you a full field rundown. Watch for your favorite driver where they are running. Red Bodine running there in fifth position. Dale Jarrett back in sixth. Jeff in eighth. And Chad Little back in tenth spot. Alan Fulwicki has remained in the last lap. He has some damage to the left front of his car. Leg speed. Leg speed. Yeah, yeah but he's a lap down. He's the first of those cars that are a lap down. Dale Earnhardt is a lap down, a result of the accident. So is Rudd. Petty involved in the crash, as was Ken Schrader. Now, here are the cars that are out of the race. Gary Ballou crashed early on lap one or two. Bill Venturini did crash, but he had some attempt from Jimmy Spencer in the crash. John Paul Jr. dropped out with uh, a blown engine. Gary Wright was involved with the spin over in turn number two. And behind the wall, not necessarily out of competition. That includes Michael and Darrell Waltrip and Bobby Hill as they try to get their cars repaired and back out onto the racetrack. But they've got some serious work to do to get those cars back out because both of the Waltrip cars were just green. Darrell's in the front, Michael's in the rear. Both drivers are okay. As far as I know of uh, today, because there's been some real crisis. We'll let the uh, field go through the frame, and not only do you know now where they are as far as uh, a serial scoring, but you'll be able to watch for your favorite driver and see where he is exactly on the racetrack. Well, we saw Bill Elliott was back in 10th or something. He has uh, passed several cars since then, so he, he has moved up uh, to 8th now. They've dropped back to 10th, Sterling Marlin tonight. There you see those cars coming in the frame there. There's Richard Petty on the left with a lot of damage on that STP Pontiac. And there's the rookie. Here's the car 68 of Bobby Hamilton. Right behind him is Ted Musgrave. So they're running right together as they have so many times this year. Boy, they've got a good battle going on for the Rick of the Year honors in the Aston Cup Series. It's really do. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top of that. There was Irv Hare. Maybe his first over track start ever just went by in the blue Oldsmobile. Yeah, he's competed in several Winston Cup races on road courses, but as far as we know, this is his first on an oval. And we're watching there's Ernie Irvin blasting out of turn number three and heading down the straightaway. Now you have been familiarized with where everybody who is out there is running on the racetrack. Ernie's able to pull away by 15, 20 car lengths over Rusty Wallace. It's a good race back for that second spot. Lake Speed is in between. He's a lap down between the second and third place cars. Rusty and Cup This is the Phillips 66 in car camera there. Will break up on the uh, on the camera. Oh, there's Ernie Irvin back in third Lake has run pretty good in that car today. He had an unscheduled pit stop and got a lap down. But he is able to run with the leaders. Right now, you're running that. He's running as good as Rusty Wallace, who's second place. Car. 15th and 16th at the moment. Davey Allison on the left in car number 28, and Dave Marcus in 71 on the right. Okay, still in the lead lap. Didn't 
Davis has had uh, all kinds of problems. And, uh, put a new nose on the car and lots of work on it, but has maintained uh, the position on the lead lap. And you'll notice the uh, different color there on the front end of the car. That's because they have completely replaced the nose on Davies' machine. Now, Dave Marcus is sponsored by the, the Big Apple Market here uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. And I believe he's going to make his annual appearance there tomorrow. The fans up here in, in Pennsylvania will just be able to go by and visit with Dave. Dave, he'll be there to sign autographs and uh, greet them. Well, it's good to see him have a good run here today before he goes in there. Back up front, meanwhile, it is still Rusty Wallace running second in the lap car of Lake Speed and third place, Hutt Strickland, car 12. These cars are going down the front straightaway. They look like they're going so slow, about 180 miles an hour right there, folks. Now breaking heavy down in turn one, down to probably 120 miles per hour. Joe Rutman in 75 and Chad Little in 19 are on the same lap and battling for position. Chad taking work to the inside of Joe, falling back in line. Now he takes the high line coming out of the corner. It's 11th and 12th they're running for. What happened, Chad Little, as he made that move down to the inside, got his angle going in the corner too straight, not able to make it around. So when he got in the corner, he couldn't turn the car. And Ned, here are those rookies that you were talking about. Our first and second of the Winston Cup rookie point standings, Bobby Hamilton and Ted Musgrave. Of course, Musgrave is in the lead going into this race, but he might not be when they come out of this race because this is the 15th race for Bobby Hamilton in the country time of car number 68. That's an Oldsmobile. And uh, they have a new sponsor on the car number 55 this week, Jasper Engines. And we understand from D.K. Ulrich, the owner of that car, that that is going to be the sponsor for the rest of this year. So it's good to see that car with some right on the side of it. Yeah, it sure is. And Ted has really performed well in Winston Cup racing. Both of these guys have. But uh, uh, both of them have great futures in Winston Cup racing. 99 laps have been completed. In last in one circuit, we will at last reach the halfway point. This has been a pretty slow race this point because of all the, the crashes that we have had. We've had nine so far. And it has really slowed down the pace of this event. Let's hope that the second half is much faster and much safer. And it certainly looks like everybody's driving a lot more careful now. Of course, they're not much by Doyle Ford and it is the halfway point at last. All phone and entries now for this week's ESPN pick the winning Chevy sweepstakes are closed. The winner of the sweepstakes will be announced in our next Chevy sweepstakes race. You can dial 1-900-933-9300 in the next 10 minutes to enter Chevy sweepstakes coming up later this year, but for this race, the entries are closed. Ernie Irvin leads this race. Ken Schrader continues to run right behind him, but because he was involved in an accident and spent seven laps in the rather seven laps in the pits, he is well off the lead. Back in a moment. Drive away. He's gonna drive away though. He'll probably be back out again. 
Did he ran over something. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he ran over something. Back at Pocono, and the caution light is on again for the 10th time this afternoon, and it's because of Richard Petty's crash up in turn number one. He hit the wall, turn number one pretty hard, started to drive away, but then couldn't. We see some, he's got down in the dirt. He looked like the left rear tire was flat. He goes in the wall, nose first. What is that rolling across the racetrack? Is that there's something off Richard's car going across the racetrack? Boom, right now it hits the wall. So, uh, I don't know what that is, but evidently that's what caused the crash. Could the tire have come off the rim? I don't know, Neil. Hard to say. Anyway, it King was something Richard. round that rolled. Wasn't yeah, right. <laughs> King Richard remains in the car while the uh, tow truck pulls to the front of it. And now we will, uh, as we see the record for uh, the most cautions, 13, and so far we have had 10 today. We will be seeing some pit stops undoubtedly here as the field comes down behind the pace truck. I don't think there'll be any question about it. There were several. In fact, the leader is coming into the pits right now, Ernie Irvin and Rusty Wallace, just about everybody else following them down here. Ken Schrader remains out on the racetrack, but Ernie Irvin, Rusty Wallace, Hunt Strickland, and others come in. John Kernan is on pit road. Ernie was scheduled for a stop in about seven laps, and whenever the caution came out, of course, they wanted to see how Richard was okay, and they saw the car moving away. Then they started clapping because they really needed this caution period. But one thing interesting on fuel is Ernie pulls into his pit stop for a four-tire change. We're not anticipating any chassis adjustment. He'll need two more stops and possibly a splash of fuel. They go to work on the right side on the Kodak Chevrolet. Let's go up pit road to Rusty Wallace and for Jerry Park. John Russell coming in about nine laps, so this uh, caution flag, no discipline for them at all. They have changed all four tires. Rusty is down and away, moving back down towards turn one. Harry Gann is also also out, so Harry Gann, a great pit stop there by Andy Petrie and Ed Cruz, as they, and Mark Martin, a good stop for them, so they all file back toward turn one. So Mark Martin is now the leader of the race. Harry Gann is second. Well, that's a collision there, wasn't there? be the leader of the race, but he's the, but the first cars, all those cars that made a pit stop out of pit road. Davey Allison will be credited with leading the 104th lap because he did not pit, and this is the first time that he has led today. Exactly, that's why I didn't want to say Mark was leading the race because <laughs> I figured, wait, wait a minute. Jimmy Means is going to be scored in second position. How about that? There he is, Jimmy, that blue car, the Alka Seltzer Pontiac. That's Rick Wilson and right in front of him, I think, in the Snickers Buick, still running after, yeah, after that crash earlier. Front end of that car looks fine. Hillens, or rather Wilson's, but uh, that kid looks bad. And the Alka-Seltzer Pontiac appears to be unscathed. It is running in second position here in our 10th caution period of the day. We'll be right back. I'm not sure Davey led that last lap because uh, didn't the leader go across the start-finish line first? He led it. He just was credited for leading that lap because he, grabbed, he passed the scoring standard. Oh, it's not at the start-finish line. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought if it was here, he didn't lead the lap. Because Ernie was still in front even when they came by there, though. Oh, oh, this lap. Okay, okay. Yep. I get you. Okay. I'll buy that. Thanks. <laughs> okay. King. Okay. 
back at Pocono International Raceway, and you can see the race fans uh, here at Pocono know of uh, Mr. Parsons' love for food. Had the pleasure of eating with Benny last night as he had about four of those grilled hamburgers that uh, were prepared by the Miller Genuine Draft people. Let's see what in the world Benny has in store this week in this edition of Buffet Benny. I came down to Village Square restaurant day for lunch. I hurried through my salad. I half ate my entree because look what was waiting. Look what a dessert bar. All these pies and cakes baked by Honey Bach, who's 76 years old, lives right down the road. I'm going to try some of the chocolate pie myself. Joe, what are you doing here? Ben, I heard you came down here. I want to make sure there's going to be some pie left for somebody else. Well, sure. I'm going to take this one back with me. Can I put this on your tab? Let me smell it first. Oh, wait, you got your own money. <laughs> yeah, I got paid. <laughs> Hey, backs, Benny. Hey, backs. I gotta go to work, Joe. Don't be doing that to me, Joe. Hey, oh. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, Benny's head looks clean right now. <laughs> <laughs> Did that stuff soak in from the top? Is that the way it worked? Yeah. I was kind of hoping to make hair grow, but I don't think it's going to I was going to say that wasn't shaving cream because there's nothing up there to shave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, still under caution here uh, for the 10th time. Richard Petty crashed back in turn, uh, out in turn number one. They're cleaning up the uh, situation down there. The uh, record, by the way, number of cautions here at Pocono is 13. That was in a June race. The record number of cautions in a July race is 10. So we have tied that this afternoon and are just nine laps beyond the halfway point. So we could very easily uh, break that record today. Jimmy Means is in the pits in the Alka-Seltzer Pontiac after uh, running at the front of the field, leading a lap under caution. And the last time that he did that, by the way, was here at Pocono in June. So we're getting the field back out onto the racetrack to resume the action for you on this hot, sunny Sunday afternoon in northeastern Pennsylvania. It means finish in June here. <laughs> Mr. Producer, how about cooling it off up here? How about cooling it off up here? Too warm? <laughs> Just about to go back to green in the Miller Genuine Draft 500 from Pocono International Raceway in Pennsylvania. If you're just joining us, we're at the 106th lap mark. We have had 10 caution periods during the day today. Several crashes, including one that involved about seven cars out of turn number three. All drivers okay. A lot of bent sheet metal, however, among those involved in the crash. Bobby Hillen. Also, uh, Dale Earnhardt and others. Alan Kowicki was the pole sitter for this race and the only one eligible for $76,000 in Unical bonus money should he be able to win the race. Right now, he is shown in 19th position, still on the lead lap. The last car, as a matter of fact. Uh, Bob, just before, the, or while we were watching some of the racing a little while ago, Lake Speed was up in there and he was in 20th position, the first car that was one lap down. Just before this last caution, the lake went into the garage area. We understand that it dropped a valve in the top-hearted Pontiac, so he's out of the race. Beginning to 
perform the side-by-side -side configuration, getting set for a restart. That's Martin Martin on the left side of the screen. He's the leader of the race. Larry Gant right behind him. And Ernie Irvin, Rusty Wallace. Look at this huge crowd on hand. Stand up and wave these fellas on. Some real race fans here to sit out in this extremely hot and humid weather to watch this race here this afternoon as we go back to green on the 108th lap. Look at Rusty Wallace go to the inside. And so does Jeff Bodari. Well, it's amazing to see those cars just come out of the pack. And, and they've got it funneled out. I don't care how wide they get on the front straightaway. If they get 10 wide, there's plenty of room, but they've got to funnel down to no more than two cars wide when they go in that corner. Here's Jeff Van on the inside of Harry Kent trying to take that. What is that, about third spot away? Must be Rusty moved up to second. Wallace is coming. Yes, he is. He's closed yes. up. He was about 10 or 15 car lengths behind. Now he's just two or three car lengths behind. And meanwhile, Ernie Irvin is trying to take over that third spot. Position going on. Races all over the track, as a matter of fact. There is uh, running along 
wrong side of Dale Earnhardt. Both cars badly damaged. That's first and second in the Winston Cup points going into this race, but both of them have had their misfortunes this afternoon. But they need to keep those cars running and they need to uh, get as many points as possible. Looks like Ernie, or rather uh, Ricky Rudd, uh, gestured to Dale Earnhardt as he went around that time. I don't know. I was looking at the five on the left side because the last time I saw that car, that wasn't there. They, they cut that off and evidently NASCAR made him put it back on. Rick Wilson directly behind. Cars are pretty battered up, but they're still out there running. The, the, the three cars, at least the five car, the three car, and the eight car, are pretty battered up. Urban Harris, looks like his car is going to be checked as Rusty Wallace continues to close in. Boy, look at him drive into the turn. <laughs> really closing the gap, going into turn three, he closes in to within just a couple of car lanes. Third corner and head down long front straightaway. Rusty is right there on the back bumper of the leader, Mark Martin. Urban is in third, and Jeff Bodine is fourth. That's right. The last time we saw Ernie, he was alongside him. He did take that third spot away. This is down the long pond straightaway. Both these cars shifting gears. They're in third gear now, which is what we normally call high gear, one to one. And about the start finish line, both these fellows will shift down into fourth gear, which is an overdrive. Four cars doing that today. Dale Jr., the number two car of Wallace, the five car of Rudd, and the six car of Mark Martin. Mark Martin leads our race. Glad you could join us this afternoon. Stay with us. We'll be right back. What it is. Somebody asked me a question. Bob, are you yelling for me? Uh-uh. Nope. Okay, I thought I heard you summon my presence. Nope. But I'll get back in the chair then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> now, we, we were not loafing on us, are you? Okay, he's 29. Yeah. Pam, you got to keep him busy. <laughs> make our season wait those commercials over. out of 200 laps are completed here at Pocono. Mark Martin leads this race, followed by Rusty Wallace, Ernie Irvin, Jeff Bodine, and Harry Ginn. And our live coverage of the Miller Genuine Draft 500 Speed World presentation being brought to you by Oldsmobile. Stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. And by your local ERA real estate specialist. 
Well, Rusty Wallace has been mounting challenges. He's pulled in right on the bumper of Mark Martin the last uh, few laps, but he's not been able to make the pass. And look at him close in once again in turn number three. This is where he's been moving in every lap, but he is not able to pass. What's wrong with this racetrack? He just can't get the handle all the way around the track. Mark Martin handles well in turn one, up in the tunnel corner. But you can see just how bad he is up in turn three. That's where Rusty Wallace right now is beating him. But Rusty cannot beat him down at the other corner. It's just a compromise in trying to set the car up from one corner to the other. Not too far looking, lurking back there in third position is Ernie Irvin, who has come within maybe 10, 12 car lengths of Rusty Wallace. The fellow just a lap or two ago, Harry Gant was running in fifth place, but he has dropped all the way back to 10th place. Apparently, he has lost his cylinder on the Skull Bandit Osmobile. He's still out there running, but he has dropped back to 10th place now. Watch Rusty Wallace just close right up on the back bumper of that Bolton Ford as he enter turn three. Down the straightaway, Mark gets a little open. Every lap, probably make a wire out of me this time. <laughs> now, Rusty, the next time by, the four car will be there. He probably will try to pull out. Hope the four car goes with him, and both those cars draft by the six car. Harry Gant has been losing positions recently. Uh, what's the problem as we get a report from Pit Road? Well, Bob, Harry had in about 30 or 40 laps ago that told Andrew Petrie that the motor felt like it was getting weak. Andy said he didn't think it was anything to worry about at the time. But Harry just drove by, and it sounds like he's only running on seven cylinders. I looked over at Andy. Andy just kind of shrugged his shoulders and it's a possible we get word now that possibly a valve spring has broken so he's definitely running on only seven cylinders he has fallen from fifth to tenth and rusty wallace has moved from second to first as he is was finally able to get around mark martin so he did exactly like i said he waited the front straight away for ernie Irvin to catch him right he got a move on coming off the tunnel <laughs> corner and went right by that's why you won your ace award last year with that excellent <laughs> prediction <laughs> see he gets a run coming off